you love mountain biking and regardless of your budget, your mountain bike probably represents a significant investment to you. Obviously, we all wanna get the most from this investment to maximize our fun out on the trail. So, our bikes should feel and perform to the best of their ability. But sometimes getting there can seem complicated and even a little overwhelming. Today we're gonna to learn how the better, worse, or the same approach can take the mystery out of modern suspension tuning and simplify it into a process that all of us can use to get the most out of our experience on the trail. In the last episode, we identified and discussed one of the biggest mistakes people make while setting up their bike suspension. That's where you'll want to get started, so if you haven't already watched that video, I'll link it in the upper right-hand corner of the screen here for you to go back and take a look at. Once you understand those basic principles and you've dialed in your spring rate, the next step is to adjust your available rebound and compression controls. Now, I know these adjustments can be intimidating, so let's first break them down into a way that we can more easily understand their purpose. Compression and rebound are words that describe the two motions in which our bike suspension travels. When your wheel hits a bump in the trail, such as a rock or root, your fork absorbs that irregularity to provide traction and comfort. This motion is referred to as compression. As your wheel passes past that irregularity, the fork then pushes back towards its extended state, which is the rebound motion. Your suspension is constantly compressing and rebounding to conform to the terrain we ride our bikes on, and the compression and rebound controls on your suspension exist to allow us to control the speed of each motion. For example, if your rebound is too fast, the bike can feel overly bouncy, bucky, and lacking traction. If your rebound is too slow, your suspension can struggle to return to its extended position in between rough spots in the terrain, which can cause it to pack up and feel very uncomfortable. We want our suspension to follow the changes in the terrain in the most natural and balanced way possible. If we take a little bit of time to adjust these controls, we can get the most out of our bikes and maximize our fun. But how do we figure out these adjustments? Many suspension manufacturers these days offer a basic setup guide. These guides can give us a place to start from, but they're in no way a one size fits all solution. Since we're all at different levels of riding ability, skill, and preferred terrain, these settings need to match where we're at as individuals. I have found that the easiest and best way possible to find my own personal sweet spot and setup is to use the better, worse, or the same method. This method allows us to learn through feeling how our adjustments are affecting our ride quality and overall experience. To do this, we want to focus on one area of adjustment at a time. Since almost all suspension products have a rebound adjustment, we'll start there. Quick note here though, most forks and shocks have a single rebound control, but high-end shocks sometimes have a separated low and high-speed rebound. If yours has both controls, only focus on adjusting one at a time. We want our rebound to be fast enough to track the terrain properly, but not so fast that we're deflecting off the ground. To get started, pick a piece of trail that reflects your normal riding terrain. You want it to be long enough that you can get up to your usual riding pace, but short enough that you can easily repeat the section over and over. Now, check to see how many clicks of adjustment your rebound offers. You can refer to the manual or setup guide for your fork or shock, or just turn the knob all the way in one direction, then turn it the opposite way, counting click by click. If you have 10 clicks or less available, a good general rule of thumb is to adjust one click at a time. If it has more than 10 clicks, we can speed things up a bit by adjusting a couple clicks at a time. All right, now let's choose a starting point. If your suspension has a manufacturer's recommended setting for your weight, start there. If it doesn't, I'd choose a setting in the middle of the range of clicks. Now you're ready to start riding, and I suggest kicking things off with a warm-up period. Doing a few laps through our selected trail section will allow us time to get our body and muscles loosened up and feeling good. It'll also allow us to get to know the baseline feeling at our starting point. Once you're feeling good and ready, it's time to make an adjustment and repeat your section of trail. You can pick either direction to go in on your adjustments, but what's most important is that you're taking note of that direction 
and assessing how it feels on your trail section. Did it feel better, worse, or the same? If it feels the same, continue moving in that original direction, repeating the process until you notice a change, then assess if that change is better or worse. If it feels better, adjust it again one to two clicks in the same direction and repeat the process. If it feels worse, go back to your starting point, but this time repeat the same process in the opposite direction. No matter where we land, we're always asking the same question of better, worse, or the same, and using that answer to guide us through the process. Next, it's time to move on to compression, and we're going to take much the same approach here as we did with rebound. When setting sag, we always wanna have our compression set to fully open so that it does not influence our sag measurement. If you've just gone through that step, you can begin there in the fully open position, or you can refer to your shock or fork setup guide if it has a recommended setting to get started from. Now, it's back to our better, worse, or the same process of adjustment and assessment. Not all suspension products have this adjustment, so don't stress if this seems to be missing from your fork or shock. You might just have a lockout type feature, something more basic like a three position adjustment, or nothing at all. In this case, just make use of the controls you have available and you're all done. Once we've found the settings that feel best, write it all down. I like to keep my settings on the notepad on my phone, so I always have them available for reference. As your writing skill and style changes over time, you'll want to go back and reassess your settings using this same method. Having a record of where your current settings are will give you a starting off point to go back to if you're not happy with the new changes. So there you have it. Hopefully this process simplifies things a bit so that we can all find an easier path towards maximum fun and enjoyment on our bikes doing what we love. Well, thanks for joining me today. I hope you found this video useful or at least entertaining. Let me know what you thought of this episode. And if you have any tips you'd like to share or if there's anything you think I missed, drop a comment below and let us all know your thoughts. Please give this video a like and share it with a friend you think could benefit from watching it. I hope you're all enjoying the spring riding season. And until next time, I hope to see you out on the trails.